Merry Christmas to all of you, my friends who are celebrating it. It's one of the best times of the year. Yesterday I got my present and I'm in a hurry to reveal it to you, to show it to you and you can also enjoy it together with me. It's from a good friend of mine, of my own town. It's Schumann, it's in Bulgaria. And his name is Petromir Panayotov. He is probably one of the best, if not the best currently, Bulgarian chess composers. He sent me this position. It was approved in my previous club. The place where I was spending most of my life while I was there. And uh, where I learned a little bit about the game. So as you can see, the position is quite a practical one. You can easily get one like this in your own games, in a real game. And it's not that obvious, but it is white to move who has the advantage and who can even win this one with a forced and amazing play. Okay, the first move is pretty obvious. This is rook f1. When black needs to choose where to run with the bishop, the best square appears to be c5. But what will happen after rook d4 is still very instructional and very interesting. We just take on f4. This is pretty obvious too. King e5 and now kaboom. Take on d4 too. Sacrificing the exchange, but after king d4, this king is in danger. And after this check, he's either losing loads of material uh, in case of king c5. We can do either bishop b4 and take this knight. Or we can do b4 followed by c5 and take this knight. We have a knight of our own choice. Or he may choose to go a little bit more actively with king to e3, where things are not looking good for him at all because of king g2. All of a sudden, the king is moving back and it takes away some of the important squares of his colleague. And white is threatening checkmate. He's threatening knight c1, followed by knight e2, knight e1, checkmate. Or he might go king f1, followed by knight e1, checkmate. And the possible line here is d4, to which the bishop goes to e5. Not only to threaten the knight, what is important is that this bishop has enough room to stay on this diagonal. And on this diagonal, it is taking care of the d2 square so that this king can never leave the cage. If the king decides to grab the pawn, this will put an end to his suffering immediately with knight to c1 check, followed by knight to d1 mate. The two knights, together with the king and together with the bishop, are very harmoniously acting as a team. And even though at the beginning they won the rim, now somehow they made it to the center and they are delivering checkmate. If instead of this, instead of grabbing that pawn, black tries 95 to free himself, well, this one we can take as this is opening the road for the knight on c4. That's the only reason why we take the knight. We don't really care so much about that piece. And after knight c4, again the best defense, we just take and on rook e8 we have enough time to defend on e2 and then to block the d2 square as well. Ultimately delivering the checkmate with our knight on d1. So that's one very beautiful end in the game with the knights only. But how about if he goes bishop c5? What is the difference on the first move if he goes there? Well, then we go b4. That's a very important move. We want to make sure that this bishop is not um, standing on the road of our pieces. We still want it on d4, and it literally has no choice but to go there again. As on bishop d6, well, the simplest is we just fork them, and we win the piece. Say bishop e5, d4. Unimportant move again when he takes, we take on f4, and on king to e5, we save our knight, and then we take this piece or that piece or both the pieces, we will see which one. It's a lot of fun for us. So therefore, the only move for black after b4 is to come back on d4 himself. But he managed to block the diagonal for this bishop. And this makes our line from b4 actually not playable. We can still take on f4 and we can still take on d4 and this is still the best. However, this time the mate is different. We should do c5. Extremely strong move. The difference in comparison to b4 is that after bishop c3 and king to e3, 
knight c1, the same mating idea no longer works, uh, or king g2 even, this same idea from before king g2 doesn't work as they have d4. And the bishop doesn't have enough room to guard this d2 square. Let's say a possible line 91 check. King takes, our knight is in pre, we cannot win this actually. We cannot even survive this most likely is black's king instead of getting checkmated will become now a hunter itself and it wants to trap our knight or it wants to take our pawns we're down an exchange and that's that's not going to be christmas present no we want our christmas present this is our present we want it now so therefore we go c5 we make sure that this king is not going to escape on the side of the board when the most obvious move for them is 97. This move, however, allows, <laughs> allows our present uh, through the roof. But the other, the other moves are not helping neither. They are losing in a more prosaic way. Say, for example, if he just does which move? Knight c8, for example. There would be bishop f4 surrounding the king, threatening e3 checkmate. And on knight of 5 we have 91 insisting on the same idea. Rook e8 still stops it, but then knight c1, all of a sudden everything, all of a sudden everything is defended. Knight b3 is a mating threat, just like before the knights from the rim move to the center. Now they are threatening checkmate. And in order to save himself, black will have to sacrifice the rook, and then down a knight he is going to lose. It's not that obvious how, but with some precise play. Uh, white is going to win. He will be attacking the pawn and then he will go for the one on h7 and little by little he should convert the extra piece. Also if the knight goes to some other square at the beginning uh, besides on c8, well actually there are so many squares I don't really see what else can he do except for knight d7 which is apparently seemingly the best move. But now comes check. That's pretty obvious, nothing really uh, that scary, nothing really that amazing. King g2 again, we insist on the mating threat, on the mating net than before, but what's the difference? Can he just go d4 like before? The difference is this one. Now after knight c1 check, whenever they take our bishop, we start chasing this king, not towards our king, we don't want to get checkmated where it is on e3 but we will be chasing it actually we'll be chasing it towards our king but on a much more distant route so check this out what follows next is the escape of napoleon from moscow but first we need to bring him to moscow so we give him a check then another check so go back home napoleon we give him another check he should go to e6 and another check he needs to go to f7, and this is the drawback behind the 97 move, the only drawback. Then another check. King cannot step on f8 as the two knights are just great. They're delivering checkmate on their own. That's a beauty. So therefore, he will have to go king g7. We keep on checking him. He goes to h6, and another check. And another check. Come back home. Come back on g4 so that we can finally checkmate you with h3. This was the present by uh, Petromir to all of you. Thanks for watching this and Merry Christmas.